This is the Avaya Podcast Network. APN. Technology, news, and information. All in one place. Text to 911, that and more. Coming up on the 911 Talk Podcast, episode 117. Recorded Saturday, December 8, 2012. Welcome to this edition of E911 Talk with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. Now, here's Fletch. If you follow the 911 industry, you couldn't help but notice all of the stories announcing the voluntary agreement and joint statement made to the FCC by the National Emergency Number Association, the 911 Association, APCO International, and carriers AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, and Verizon, known as the Big Four. They announced their commitment to voluntarily offer their subscribers text-based emergency communication services in accordance with the Alliance for Telecommunications Industry Solutions, or ADIS, industry standard solution currently expected to be completed in the first quarter of 2013, to requesting public safety answer points, or PSAPs. Well, as expected, this topic has sparked a considerable amount of additional questions and debate from the technology community asking not only how, but why. Well, my initial response to that is, hey, where were all you folks when the FCC and the industry was discussing this and asking for comment for the past two to three years? Of course, it's easy to find stories of people hiding in their closets, under their beds, where they're hiding from an intruder or some other danger. There are stories where SMS messaging, regardless of its unreliability, was the only mode of communications working during a massive disaster, something that I personally experienced during the recent Hurricane Sandy. But a community of users that is quite often forgotten are those who are deaf or hard of hearing. Now, one of the first questions many are going to ask are, how many deaf or hard of hearing people are there in the U.S.? Actually, it was a question I had myself. Unfortunately, this seemingly straightforward question doesn't really have a single simple answer. One of the best resources for the topic is the Gallaudet University and the Gallaudet Research Institute, whose legislated obligation is to support and conduct research and disseminate findings on topics of concern to deaf people and those who live, work with, and educate them. You can see my blog at www.avaya.com forward slash Fletcher for links to Gallaudet. Now, as I've mentioned in other podcasts and in my presentations to the FCC, the deaf and hard of hearing community today is, from an emergency call to 911 perspective, treated like second class citizens. 911 can be dialed from nearly any device you can make a phone call from, including non-initialized cellular phones. However, those that are not able to use the telephone must resort to some other means of communication. With smartphones, computers, and now tablets, more and more people have a means to communicate with nearly any other person on the planet through multiple means of communications, including email, video, SMS messaging, and of course, the old-fashioned voice mechanism. Despite my 14-year-old daughter's belief, people actually still do make phone calls. Text from Haley. No, they don't, Dad. Well, that's what I'm dealing with. If you're deaf or hard of hearing, those devices are also available to you to communicate, just like anyone else, except to 911 in an emergency. Now, the immediate response I get from most people who happen to have their hearing is that, I thought it was the law that 911 centers have TDD, TTY enabled call taker positions. Well, that is correct, but unfortunately, most deaf or hard of hearing users don't carry around the typewriter sized TDD required to communicate or have access to a telephone line where they can plug one of those machines in. Another point that's lost by those of us who have our hearing is the extreme inefficiency of communicating by TDD TTY. In today's day of broadband connectivity, near real-time communication over just about any media, there are very few left that have ever even heard a TDD TTY communicating. Need help? Send the police to 5429 Southwest 1st Street, apartment 27D. There are two people breaking my window and I'm hiding in the closet. Now, although that seems like a simple emergency message, when transmitted via TDD TTY, sounds like this. Now, by my watch, that took 30 seconds to play out. It didn't include the time it took to type it, 
the time it took the network to transmit it, and the time it took to type a response, or the time it took to transmit that response. The point I'm trying to make here is a simple one. I've seen proposals that have actually suggested the industry uses the existing TDD TTY communications mechanism to deliver text to 911 centers. Now, although that would be possible, what we don't want to do is invest in an archaic technology that doesn't address the other issues, such as real time text and multimedia communications directly with the 911 call taker using things like American Sign Language and a video interpreter. To deliver that is going to take a next generation emergency services IP network. And the industry needs to keep its focus on the delivery of that new backbone, as that'll enable the multimedia experience we all enjoy today easily and affordably to those who are deaf or hard of hearing. Now I commend the carriers and the industry organizations that have banded together to file this letter of intent to solve this problem. It certainly brings awareness to many who never even knew it existed and ultimately is going to help deliver common modern day communications to our emergency responders and our citizens. Now, for those of you that think that this type of network isn't possible or it's too forward looking and well beyond today's available technology, I'll gladly refer you over to the Reach 112 Total Conversation Project. As stated on their webpage, Total Conversation means a standardized concept where you can use video, text, and speech at the same time in a call. It can be seen as an extension of the video phone concept by the consistent addition of the real-time text medium. You can go to www.reach112.eu for more information on Reach 112. Whether you dial 911, 999, or 112, the end goal is the ability to reach emergency services by anyone, on any device, and from anywhere. I don't see any borders mentioned in that statement. And as an industry, we should strive to see this agreement extend well beyond the U.S. You've been listening to the E911 Talk Podcast with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. E911 Talk is a weekly podcast available on sites like this, as well as iTunes, and is available free of charge. If you have any comments or questions, you can email Fletch at FletcherM at Avaya.com. That's Fletcher, the letter M, at Avaya.com. Be sure to listen in next week for more informative topics on E911. This is the Avaya Podcast Network, APN.